Howdy howdy everybody and welcome to the War Chest. So, how this game works is you are randomly given four different uh, types of troops out of 16 and those are going to be your troops for the entire game. So for so for this game we're playing today, we're going to be it's going to be the warrior priest, scout, berserker and archer versus the ensign, marshal, pikeman and swordsman. So how this game works is you want to take all of your little objective markers and ha place them in these little spots here. Now you do that is by using the pieces on the board. It'll make sense. So, uh, for setup, you just want to take two of each of the pieces from the supply, because this is your supply. You want to take two of each and throw them into there to now make your bag. So you're going to be drawing cards, or tokens, I should say, from that bag to play from. And for once we're done with that, then we are essentially done with setup. If you're playing a two-player game, you do not use these gray out bits. So we're only using the inside hexagon. Keep that in mind. Each player draws three cards, so little tokens, and we get to choose what to do from there. So we drew a scout, a warrior priest, and a berserker. You can either play this face up on the board as a deploy. You can either play it face down to do certain face down actions and play it face up to do certain face up actions. Uh, deploying is as simple as putting the piece down on the board on one of your control markers. You can only put them on these objective control markers. You can't put them anywhere else on the board unless a certain character tells you otherwise. If you play it face down, you can do several things. You can either claim control of a piece, of a, a section on the board. You can claim initiative, or which is essentially saying next turn I'm going to go first. Or you can take a anything from your supply, any one token, and put it into a discard pile, which will then be shuffled back into your bag so you can use that later. Essentially giving your that piece more chance to be drawn so you can use it more in the game. If you play it face up, there's a few things you can do there. You can actually use the pieces that are on the board. Once you have, let's say I have a berserker on the board already, I can now use this to either move, which is however the move action works for that character. I can attack with it. Or I can use its tactic, which each one has their own special little tactics. So for the archer, for example, you can attack a unit two spaces away, assuming there's nothing in between. So I can do all those things with face-up actions. You go one at a time. You don't do all of your actions and then the next person goes. You do one at a time. Until each person is out of tokens, and then you draw three more from your draw bag, and you just keep going. If you ever run out of things, you shuffle up the discard pile and you just keep going from there. Let's say you attack the enemy, or the enemy attacks you. That piece is gone for good. You don't put that into the discard pile, you get rid of it. So the more you attack something, the less of it is in the game total for the entire game. That's all the explaining of the rules I feel like I need to do. And you'll see it be played out right now, so hope you enjoy. Alright, so let's get this game started, shall we? So I got a scout and two warrior priests, and the other dudes over there, they got uh, their initiative token and two ensigns. So I can do a scout, warrior priest actions. Uh, let's start by just putting a warrior priest down. I feel like getting him out into the gates is probably going to be a pretty important thing to do for the first step. Uh, While well, he's probably actually going to... You know, just deploy this face down. I don't really have to worry about anything. And he gets initiative. Keep in mind the initiative track token can only be flipped once per round. So that's the so next round they are definitely going to be the ones going first. Now it's back to me. I'm going to play this face up. And then I'm going to use that to move. So I'm going to move over this way. For now they're going to play an end sign over on the other opposite side of the board. Just trying to keep some tension away for right in the beginning. And then I'm actually going to use this scout to go play face down, and then I'm going to add another warrior priest to my discard pile. So that way when I have to shuffle up all my coins again, the warrior priest is more likely to show up. Uh, whereas he is now going to play the ensign to move it a little bit closer to that goal there. And now that's over, so now let me just uh, grab three more, and we just keep the gamut going. You got a pikeman, a pikeman, and a swordsman, and I got two archers and a scout again. Uh, and now it is their turn to go first, so actually what they're going to do probably is, uh, they don't have any more ensign things. They used both of them, so what they're going to actually do 
with the swordsman is play it face down to gain another ensign on there. They have up to five tokens. Keep in mind, once those tokens are, if someone attacks the ensign, they're down to four, and then they're down to four for good. So it's very important to, you know, try to keep fighting to a minimum unless you're sure you're going to kick their ass. What my, what, uh, I guess, uh, golden team's choice is going to be is to spawn an archer over there to get some more, you know, hip it happening stuff on the field. And then he's going to put a pikeman down. I'm just going to put a pikeman right there just to try to keep the defenses for this section pretty good. Uh, and then I am going to maneuver my archer. I'm going to have him go a little bit closer to that thing there. And he's gonna have his pikeman uh, go a little bit further up, actually. Yeah, he's gonna play face up, move him a little bit closer up in that direction. Uh, just, you know, cause some little chaos and stuff going on there. Pretty cool. And then I'm actually gonna use this face down, because again, I don't have a scout on the board yet, so there's no real reason to use him to play the scout. And I guess drew his last token. I'm gonna use that to reclaim initiative, because it doesn't have to be the little initiative token that does it. As long as it's a face down action, you can do it. And there's no reason not to. So we're doing that. Yeah, yeah, fuck it. It's a good idea anyway, because we're about to draw the initiative token now, along with two berserkers, but you know, that's okay. Uh, and then they get, of course, the marshal, the swordsman, and the marshal again. Uh, they have a lot of synergy with the ensign and the marshal, because they can choose someone who's pretty at uh, a distance and have them move and attack if they want to, if they have the capability which is a pretty scary thing. So I want to make sure that I keep everybody as far away from at least those two as possible. Uh, but for now, it is my turn to go first. I'm going to use this to, since again, it could be used for any face down action. doesn't have to be initiative. I'm going to use a face down to just gain a scout onto the board there, just because I feel like I want to start playing those. Uh, and now we have Mr. Berserker. Uh, actually, but no, we don't, because it's their turn. Uh, they are going to, pl they're going to, uh, they're going to, you're going to use the Marshall face down to gain more pikemen, I think. There we go, because we're going to, they're going to try to bolster up their people up there. Sorry for the lawn mowing and shit in the background, by the way. I think we're going to follow in his footsteps and just kind of beef up whatever we have. We're going to put another warrior priest in there. He's going to play the swordsman face down to get, let's just say, another marshal. And then he's going to play the berserk man face down just to gain another, let's do another archer. There we go. And then his last turn, he's actually going to play that face down to claim initiative again. And so now both of our bags are empty. And now we're just going to plop all of our discard pile stack into there. So I, he went up at 10. I went up at 11. I did a little bit more, uh, you know, getting some from the supply than he did. And then so he gets a marshal, an ensign, and a marshal. And I get an archer, a warrior priest, and a scout. Okay. His turn to go first. What's he going to do? He's going to use the ensign. He's going to move him into that control area. So now next time the ensign can control something. Uh, he's going to so that's that's a little bit scary he's kind of got a lead going there but i have my archer and now he is going to go right there so now he can he can attack he can control this if he wants to on his next turn but he can also attack the pikeman or the ensign for free because again now the, if you guys don't play this game the pikeman if you're adjacent and you attack it then you have to remove a coin so like it's like you get hurt because they have a little a big old spear it goes ouchie uh, but the the archer isn't adjacent, so they can just attack that guy for free. And the ensign is just also pretty exposed right now. And they don't know if I have another archer in there, but they also don't have any possibilities of fixing that. <laughs> so they're just going to play uh, this martial face down, and they're going to grab another ensign. Uh, whereas I am going to move the warrior priest now also onto another control token. So now white's kind of got a bit of a lead going there. So he's actually just going to play the marshal over here. He just get some more people on the ground. Keep in mind, every single troop here can only have one of itself. So you can't have two marshals on the field. You can't have two uh, archers or anything like that. It's just one. So you got to be careful with how you maneuver stuff around. And then I have a scout. And you know what? The scout, uh, his little passive is that he can be deployed adjacent to a friendly unit. He's going to get played right over there. Because right, that way now he's close to going to either or of those extra spots. So now he can pretty much do whatever the hell he wants. So Black still gets to go first on this next roundabout. He gets a pikeman, a marshal, and a swordsman. Oh, whereas I get a warrior priest, a warrior priest, and a scout. Good. That's actually really good for me. Um, but let's see what they do. So first of all, uh, Mr. Marshall 
is going to move up a little bit. There we go. So now he's kind of in position. And then we can go. We're going to take the warrior priest and we're going to control. So we're going to get in the control marker on there. So now we can spawn people in to the game from right there. It's pretty easy. So we're going to have, we're going to control, control that. So now we are one step closer to winning. We only need to control three more spots and we're already on one and close to two more. And then now after warrior priest attacks or controls draw one coin from your bag and use it to take any action you want so i get the berserker i don't have a berserker on the board yet what you guys want uh now i do do i want it to go on the board it could be any action it could be face up down sideways doesn't really matter uh so i think i'm going to place him uh, over there just to gain some more defenses over there and that sounds pretty good to me and now we get to do that which is sweet uh, so now they get to go. They're going to bring their pikemen a little bit closer to that archer. Because for those of you who don't know how the archer works, he attacks two spaces away. He cannot attack one space away. His only attack is two spaces away. So he doesn't get to attack one space away. So that pikeman is now effectively uh, threatening the archer without the archer being able to do anything back. Because he can risk killing the ensign there, but then he also risks getting killed by the pikeman. But also, I don't have a token for that anyway, but he doesn't know that, so who knows what's going to happen. Uh, I do, though, and that's that the scout is going to move a bit further back. We're going to try to control this half of the board, and then we'll push in to gain some leeway there. Whereas Mr. Swordsman uh, is going to... He's going to wait to spawn a Swordsman, and we're actually going to get another Ensign, just to try to really secure that from happening to, to you know do something uh and then i still have warrior priest uh warrior priest i'm going to get off of the controls spot so i'm going to move him only because you can't spawn something if something's already there so i'm going to try to use this to spawn in something eventually actually now everyone's already spawned in i'm an idiot i'm going to move him up anyway just screw it why not and there we go so now he's in contention for that uh so let's see how it goes so we get he gets draws another three. He gets an ensign, a swordsman, and his initiative marker. And I get an archer, a, a scout, and a berserk token. And he gets to go first. He's going to do something a little bit interesting. He's going to bolster his ensign. So now, if he chooses to attack, then it's not going to kill it because now he has two, essentially two hit points on that on that ensign. And then the pikeman obviously can't be attacked, so he's effectively useless right now. Uh, the archer sees this and thinks two things he can either one run away a little bit yes you know, just to get that off the field or he can see that as like him clearing both options meaning he likely cannot because he would have attacked the archer now to get rid of all threat immediately he's still leaving himself open for an attack so there's no reason not to do it because he doesn't have a defense is what this it would make sense to assume but it also make more sense to assume to run away as well but I'm feeling a little cocky, and I obviously I know what the fuck he has, so I'm kind of being a little bit biased there. I'm gonna shoot one of his ensigns, so we go, Pew! and we kick him down a peg, and he's down by half. So now he's back to one hit point on there. Uh, but it kept him alive, and it kept him on the control marker, so not necessarily a bad thing to do. Uh, he is going to just, he still needs to control something. He doesn't want to put the swordsman down just yet. He's gonna grab that and gain a marshal. He's just he's just stacking up. Actually, he's gonna gain a pikeman. He's gonna gain a pikeman. Just to gain some more actions there. So now he should be a little bit more afraid because the pikeman might show up a little bit more likely next time around. And actually, to ensure that, that doesn't happen, he is going to use this to gain initiative. So next turn he gets first attack, so maybe he can just take out that ensign right away. Uh, whereas he is going to use the swordsman. To just play face down and grab. Maybe he's another swordsman. I think, actually, no, another marshal, because we don't have him on the board yet, so there's no reason to try to bolster the shit out of him. And then Scout is going to be used to control that there. So now they're already up to four, whereas they haven't had really a good opportunity to get any, which is unfortunate for them. Now I end up with my initiative marker. We got a warrior priest and a berserker, so we can't kill the ensign right away. Whereas they get the pikeman token that they need. Uh, as well as a swordsman and an ensign. So it's my turn. I can't do anything to, to help the archer, even if I wanted to. Even knowing this information, I cannot help the archer. I played a little bit stupid. Because again, I, I, I should have pushed back because he was going to reshuffle anyway, so it made sense. Um, but it's fine. Because we will just slide uh, a little that way, actually. Let's go that way. 
you know, because they were still kind of in contention for it, but we're also not saying, hey, I'm going to let myself die. And if he had two martial tokens, it'd be really smart for him to just move in and punch him in the face, but he doesn't. So what he's going to do instead is control. Actually, no, he's going to kill. He's killing first. He's, he's going to stab the shit out of this archer and kill it. So, blah, blam. He also could have controlled that and would have been only one away. And then we could have just kind of bum rushed this for victory, but we didn't. So... That's that's my bad. It was a bad play. But now the archer has been killed. Uh, there's still a couple archer tokens in there, so there's still potential for the archer to do something. But until then, uh, we've cleared this area, and now it is completely, almost completely free for black team to just gain these three control points. Uh, but until then, I have my initiative thing. I don't really need to do that. I'm just gonna put my berserker a little bit closer, just to try to you know say, hey, there's still something going on here. You don't don't you do that just yet. Uh, whereas he's going to control this one now. So now we've got one on black side uh, compared to two on white side. So it's getting a little bit more even. And then I'm just going to play that face down. That's all I can do with it. And I'm going to gain a berserker. And then he's going to play this face down uh, to gain initiative. Just because it makes sense. Two ensign. That's really good for him. And the marshal. And I get a scout. Scout. And warrior priest okay it's his turn he is moving the ensign off of there or he can ooh you know what he's gonna use his tactic to move the pikeman and he can move him to there but that would probably well do we know how many he's, he's already played two he already has two down there that's three and he sees that four and five are there he can't move the berserker he's gonna move the pikeman that way to threaten the berserker and potentially gain control he's a fucking mastermind <laughs> uh whereas i will now damn what do i want to do i don't know we could move up but that's that's risky that's risky as hell it's also risky for the marshal so he's probably not gonna move up either <laughs> but uh let's just move the scout let's move mr scout a little bit closer so that way you know if he tries to lead into there and threaten him then at least we have two potential attack points Going on to the marshal. Uh, Ensign is now going to move towards this control zone here. Oh, uh, and then we have... This is really tough. Let's bolster the warrior priest, I think. So that way we can move him in there and potentially do something there. And he's the marshal. But he's wanting to know that he drew a marshal. But he's actually going to try to gain a marshal. Just to try to confuse the shit out of those people over there. And then we have a scout. Uh, let's just bring the scout. Let's, let's bolster the scout too. Because now we have two bolstered options to attack this thing with. He also sees that there's no scouts left. So he's not afraid of the scout anymore. At least until his bag reshuffles. Uh, so he's like, oh, okay, whatever. And we gain an archer. Two archers and a warrior priest. While he gains a marshal and a marshal and his initiative track marker. He still gets to go first, so he, you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna bolster his marshal. What are you gonna do about that, punks, huh? Think you're cool? Uh, and yes, they do. But we're gonna play another archer in line here for the pink, for the pikeman. And now pikeman's gonna pretty much be dead, because uh, you can't actually save him, even if you wanted to. Uh, which is a shame for them, but not a shame for over... He, he still has two tokens left. He's gonna wait to see if he, he should move that. He's gonna play this face down. He's grab his swordsman off his stack here. Uh, while he's just going straight for the kill. He's shooting that pikeman down. Kablam! Because he doesn't want to risk that pikeman killing his berserker. Maybe he just didn't notice it. And now he has potential for control over here. Uh, whereas he has the marshal. He sees that the most he can do is one damage, but also he could still use his last token to gain control, which means he might get hit. He can either... No, it's fine. Because if he moves into there, he either gets hit now, and then they still get control for this first bit, because it's, oh, it's not even gonna, gonna reshuffle. Uh, he's gonna quickly coin count. <laughs> he's gonna do a quick coin count. And this is this is him, so he, he, he can tell. He's gonna do... A secret look, which I totally remember how to do. There, sword initiative and marshal. Okay, so he's played one, two, three, four, five. He already used all of his marshals, so he's he's going to wait to try to gain control then, because that could be stupid. He'd be leaving himself very exposed. He's instead just going to, and again, he can bolster things as thick as you want. He can have like four, but you know that's that'd be a little dumb. So he's going to keep. We're gonna get as many things on the board as possible. We can start getting the swordsman out, give him something to do. It's been a, it's about time, honestly. And the warrior priest, not really feeling very threatened, because uh, he's bolstered. He's just gonna go in there. All right, does that make sense? That makes sense to do. Could attack. He still he would still have initiative. He'd still have initiative, so he could hit him once. And as long as he draws another warrior priest, quick coin count. Oh, we're just gonna flip. So 
He's there. Oh, he's going to get reshuffled. And this is the only one that he has. Did the warrior priest get hit? Oh, no, it's down there. Okay, so there is... How many tokens on this stack? There's like, what, six or something? I don't know. I should have counted. One, two, three, four, five, six. So there's like a seven. There's a two in seven chance that he can control that before he dies, assuming that that marshal will be able to attack, which he knows it's very unlikely because he did play at least one face up, right? He played one face up. And he already did that. It's it's a risky play, but he's pretty close to winning. So he seems to go up there and take that. And then he's, he, he's pretty much clear to get this, assuming he draws a bunch of berserkers. Uh, well, I'll play risky. Why not? It makes for a more interesting game. So now he's in contention to potentially capture that. And that is the end of that. So he still has initiative at the end of this, which is a little scary. Uh, but that's fine. So his last things are pikemen, pikemen, and swordsmen. Whereas he's not going to shuffle up his bag and draw a berserker, a warrior priest, and the initiative. So he, he's going to get that now. She's actually pretty yikes for him, for black. Uh, but black is initiative. Black's going to just chuck. He only has two things on the board. He's got to put something down to potentially clear this, put his pikemen there. And then warrior priest is just going straight in for the control there. Yeah, we're going to use that. Going to control this zone here. Oops, sorry, sorry. Oop, okay, I, I broke him up. I broke up the church, sorry. And then he gets to draw another thing in here, which is the archer. So archer gets a free action. Or just this whole token gets a free action because you can draw a coin from your bag and use it to take any action. So it's not just the fact it's an archer. I'm going to play face down and gain a berserker. So that way we can potentially control this next time. Uh, so now it is his go. He's going to... He's He needs to work on something down here. So he's going to put the swordsman over there. And now when he shuffles, he's going to have a lot of opportunity for a swordsman because he, he took a lot of those and they're all still in there uh but he doesn't give a shit he sees the berserkers okay i'm just gonna move the berserker up one ha ha he he and then pikeman can just i don't even know just go over here try to smack him down because again he could still reclaim that it's not like that's there forever he can reclaim that as his own which would then even the playing field but all they need to do is capture that one which is fucking terrifying he's gonna use this to gain they should have just no reason not to you now he can't oh, well you know i didn't see that coming Wow, this, this could have played out incredibly well for him, but it does, doesn't matter. He, he controls this, and uh, wow, da, 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 he wins. Wow, it's crazy. <laughs> I could have played that better as, um, as Black. I'll give him that. He had some good potential. That's the game, I guess. Yeah, Black got destroyed, uh, which happens, you know, sometimes. Uh, I don't remember who won the first game, but have him on, like, a... It's like a... Blah, blah, you know, like a scoreboard. <laughs> Who's winning? Who's winning? Are they tied? Maybe we'll have to do this a third time at some point. Uh, we'll find out. But until then, that was it for Table for One, I guess. I thought that'd be a much uh, longer <laughs> bit. But, hell, that was, a, that was just smooth plays by me and some pretty dumb plays by me. So, hey, what are you going to do? Uh, so, tune in next Sunday. We're, doing, we're going live. We're doing Macro Micro Macro Crime City. We're going to finish it off live with you guys, so uh, whoever wants to tune in can tune in. And if you don't want to, that's completely fine. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to have a blast doing it, so I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for tuning in to the, the season 2 premiere of Table for One. Bye, everybody.